Good morning. And it's good to see those in the hall and those who are viewing online with us. Welcome to Bethesda Gospel Hall, Park Road in Hartlepool. And we are delighted again to be able to bring another message from the Bible. Firstly, we're going to just open with a word of prayer. Father, again, we give thee thanks for the Lord Jesus. We thank thee that he came into this world, God manifest in flesh. And we would just look to thee, Father, that as we would again open thy word and speak concerning the Lord Jesus, that if there are those who do not know the Lord Jesus as their own saviour, that today might be that day when they would realise of their great need and turn to thee for salvation. We just look to thee and seek thy help to be upon us in the Saviour's precious and worthy name. Amen. We're going to read two, two readings. Firstly, please, in Mark's Gospel and chapter 10. Mark's Gospel and chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 17. Mark's Gospel and chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 17. And this is what it tells us. And when he was gone forth into the way, that is the Lord Jesus, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honour thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And then, please, we're going to read from Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel. And chapter 1. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. And we're going to cut in to... Verse 26 of Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And it tells us this in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then we're going to read in chapter 2 of Luke and verse 1. Luke 2 verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son 
and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And we know God will bless the reading of his word. Now you might say, well, we've, we've read in Mark's gospel when the Lord Jesus was a bit older and we had this man coming to him asking him a question. And then we've just read about the birth of the Lord Jesus. Well, you see, these two things are linked. Firstly, this is the last Sunday before we would enter into the Christmas day. And although we will have a service on Christmas Eve, this will be the last gospel message before Christmas on a Sunday. And so it's appropriate that we think again of the birth of the Lord Jesus, because that's what people have been doing when they've been thinking in this month of December about the coming of a saviour, of the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read that here was a man who was a rich young ruler. And he came to the Lord Jesus and he came running. There was an urgency about this man. He came to the Lord Jesus urgently. And he said to him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus said to him, why callest thou me good? Why do you call me good? There is none good but one that is God. You see, this man, if he was calling the Lord Jesus good, he had to acknowledge that the one before him was God himself. Now that was a very strong thing for the man to acknowledge. But when we read in Luke's gospel, we found that Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel who was sent from God. The angel didn't come and give the message from themselves. Gabriel didn't say, this is my message. But Gabriel came sent from God. And the very person that this rich young ruler met, he was also sent from God. Because the Bible tells us that the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Well, who was that Saviour of the world that the Father sent? Well, Gabriel brought that very message to Mary. Gabriel said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. And he said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. This person, the Lord Jesus, was the very one sent from God. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the angel said to, to Joseph that Mary, she shall give, bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Then we read of the birth of the Lord Jesus, of how Mary and Joseph, they had to go to Bethlehem from Nazareth. And how she brought her firstborn son, just as the angel had said, that this virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Not knowing a man, she had this firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And the shepherds, they were in the field and the angel came to them and said, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, 
which shall be to all people. You see, this message wasn't just for the angels, but this message was for you and for me. This is the good news, this message that gospel stands for good news, which we declare every single Sunday of the person of the Lord Jesus. And what's that message? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour. Who's the saviour? Which is Christ the Lord. That's what the angel told Mary. That's what the angel told the shepherds. That's what we tell you today. That the Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God and he is the saviour of the world. He is the one who we speak about today. He is the one we want to bring your attention to. He is not just a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger, but he grew up to be a man. He grew up to do wonderful things. And he grew up to be hated. People hated him. Well, that man, that rich young ruler came running to him and he said to him, what can I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus, first of all, says, well, why would you call me good? You see, today is the day, this, this month is the day of being good, isn't it? We tell the children, are you being good because you won't get any presents? We talk about Father Christmas and his, his list, his good list and his naughty list. And there's even a well-known supermarket who are telling us, well, this year there's no naughty list. There's no naughty list this year. It doesn't matter how we behave. It doesn't matter how bad we've been. But we can all have presents and we're all good. Well, you know, that's not a new message. That is a message which has been told over and over and over throughout in this world. We can go back into our Bible and we can find in Psalm 14, it tells us that the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and did seek God. And what was the response? They'd all gone aside. There were none that doeth good, no, not one. That's what the Bible tells us. There is not one of us that's done good. Oh, well, you might say, well, that's just the Old Testament. That's just the Old Testament that you've said. But here the Lord Jesus said to this man, why do you call me good? There is none good but one that is God. The Bible tells us God cannot lie. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. If we read in Romans chapter 3, it tells us again these words from the psalm. There is none righteous, no not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of their way, they are unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no not one. And it goes on to tell us that... But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and come short or fallen short of the glory of God. There's no difference. We are all the same. We've all fallen short of God's high standard, except for one. And that was the very person of the Lord Jesus. But here, this man, he came running. Remember, we read of the shepherds. They came to the Lord Jesus, didn't they? They followed what the angel said, and they worshipped him, and they told others about him. But this man, this rich young ruler, he came running to the Lord Jesus he knelt down before the Lord Jesus, but sadly, he didn't go away as those shepherds did. 
He didn't go away rejoicing. He didn't go away happy. But he went away sad. Why did he go away sad? When the Lord Jesus told him, he said to him, Thou knowest the commandments. And the man quite proudly would have said, I have done all of these from when I was little. From, where, from my youth I have done all of these. Then the Lord Jesus, he loved him. Even though the Lord Jesus knew he was telling this man something he didn't want to hear, he loved him. And that's why we come and we tell the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world to save sinners because he loves us. He died for us. And sometimes when we discipline, we discipline a child because we have to tell them the right way. Because we love them. And because we care for them. And the Lord Jesus, he said, one thing thou lackest. He didn't mean there was only one thing that he'd fallen short with. But out of those things which he said in the commandments, there was one of them he didn't mention. So he said to this man, go and sell everything you have. You've got much, well give it away. And give it to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Take up the cross and follow me. But this man, he was sad. And it tells us he went away grieved for he had great possessions. You see, if he had nothing, it might have been easy to leave everything and follow the Lord Jesus. But because he had much, it was hard for him to give. You know, the Bible tells us of the Lord Jesus, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, for our sakes, he became poor. He left heaven. He left his father. And he came into this world to die on the cross at Calvary. Because he loves us. And he wants us to trust him as our own personal saviour. He died for us. And he cares for us. You know, there is a, there's a song which I like to, to hear. And it was... I can't remember who wrote the song now, but it was, it was sang by a group called the Ball Brothers. And the opening lines tell us it's not just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not just about the angels who sang for him. It's not about the shepherds on the bright and shining star. It's not about the wise men who travel from afar. But the message, it's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. You see, Nicodemus, he came to the Lord Jesus by night and the Lord Jesus said, you must be born again, Nicodemus. And he said, well, how can I be born again? I'm an old man. He wasn't talking about a natural birth, but a spiritual birth. By trusting the Lord Jesus and getting rid of the old life, and starting afresh with him. It's about the stone that was rolled away. That reminds us of the cross. When the Lord Jesus died, he was buried. But on that third day, he rose again. That stone was rolled away, not so that we, he could get out. But that we could look and see he was alive. It was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. That's what the message is about. It's about the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's what it's about. Acts 4.12 tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none of a name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's why the Lord Jesus came into this world. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whoever, anyone who believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why he came. He came not just to be a baby in a manger and have a lovely nativity scene. He came not just to be thought about by the shepherds coming to see him and the wise men coming to see him, but he came to deal with the problem of our sins. He came to deal with your sin and he came to deal with my sin. 
You know, we look and we think about Father Christmas and we think about the naughty list and the good list. But you know, the Bible actually speaks about a real list. The Bible tells us that there is a book and it is written. And there are names in that book. And the Bible tells us that whoever was not found written in that book of life would be cast into the lake of fire. That is a real book. There is a real punishment for not putting our faith and trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is real. Those which are written in the Lamb's book of life will be safe, will be secure. But those that were not found written in that book of life, they'll face eternal punishment. It's not just a lovely little story, but it's life and death. It's a real situation where the Lord Jesus Christ, he came into the world to be the saviour of the world. When Joseph was told that he should call his name Jesus, for he should save his people from their sin, it wasn't something that he might do, but it was something that the Lord Jesus would do. He came to be the saviour of the world. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God has made a way possible for you and for me by putting our faith and our trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for listening. Again, you can visit us at Bethesda Gospel Hall on Facebook or on our website, three W's dot what's in it, number four me. .org.uk. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a service on Christmas Eve here in the hall. Uh, if you uh, live locally, you would be welcome to come. If you could message the details of who would like to come, that would help us with social distancing and everything. But if you are not able to come, we, we do hope to, to stream it online as well. Um, so we would be delighted to see all who could come. Shall we just finish with a word of prayer. Father, again, we give thee thanks for the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee for his love toward us. We thank thee for his sacrifice on going to that cross at Calvary and shedding that precious blood that men, women, boys and girls might be saved. And we just pray, Father, that if there are those who still do not know the Lord Jesus for their own saviour this day, that they will trust him and have that peace. That, that everlasting life. We just look to thee now, just ask thee to keep us safe again, and we just give thee our thanks in the Saviour's precious and worthy name. Amen.